Now then, Boston band The Pixies have a new single out. It's called Gigantic. Recently, they were in London and Rachel Davis went to Kentish Town to talk to them. We're here at the Town and Country today to speak to one of the most exciting bands to have come out of America in the past couple of years, and that's The Pixies. Coincidence you should ask about the name because this guy thought of the name before we were even a band. Mm -hmm. So what happened then? What was Just the Just looked it up in the dictionary, that's it. Like the word pixies, you know? She was a little elf. I didn't know that. <laughs> I probably just sound silly to start a band. You did too, didn't you? Yeah, silly, huh? <coughs> but we so did. We got our student started. loans, packed our bags, started, and tried to start a band mm -hmm. in college. Stuck here out of gas, out here on the Gaza Strip, I'm driving too fast. Your album, Come On Pilgrim, was extremely well received by the press, especially over in Britain. Were you really surprised by that, or, or were you expecting it, or what? We didn't know what to expect, I don't think. We didn't even know if our songs were any good. First time in a studio, really, doing songs. It was good. It's really good. First I mean, time in a band, felt... actually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think that we have no direction except that we like records. Yeah. And we just assume make them as well as buy them and listen to them. Yeah. We switched majors how many times? I, I, we're confused kids. You can't compete with with um, the Rolling Stones starting out, and so your, your, your first reaction is to go to college radio or underground radio or, you know, that sort of stuff. And uh, in order to, like, um, present your otherwise normal pop songs to that audience, you gotta just skew them a little bit, I guess. And so that is a little bit intentional, I think, to remain quirky. avant-garde or anything like that, but it's a lot easier to be esoteric than it is to appeal to a large amount of people and still be good. <laughs> so until we get really good at our quirkiness, I mean, really good at being good for 10,000 people, it's better to, to just sort of be a little bit odd, I think. A lot of people in the press, especially, seem to have picked up on the uh, obsession in your songs about incest and stuff like that. Do you get fed up of it, or...? No, no, if that's what they want to talk about. I mean, it's their article, it's their magazine, and I don't care if they want to talk about that. Well, do you dispute the fact that it's, it's about that, or what? No, there's a couple songs, so they always go for the spicy ones. So the mm. spicy ones are about incest, I guess. Yeah, what does Casey Kasem say on, uh, he says, um, something about reaching for the stars and all that. Yeah, sure, we want to be big. we to be massive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, you can talk in, and talk and talk. A, what it comes down to is, you know. In a good sense. Having a lot come in, a lot of money come in or something, you know, or else you go on to something else, you get bored after a while. It's fun to be broke and playing clubs and all that, but you can't do that for a long time. <laughs> 